and you participated in the NTSC. That's correct. Tell us about that. What does that stand for, and what did you do? Well, that was a, that was a quite a momentous. There's a necessity occasion. for the Federal Communications Commission to control the spectrum. The spectrum being the radio environment, frequencies from this frequency, that frequency, that frequency, and assigning those for commercial use by the people in the United States and for educational use. In assigning that spectrum, they not only assign the band that's assigned to a given licensee, but they must tell that licensee the standards under which the transmission must take place so that there's a lock and key relationship between the transmitter and the receiver. These early sets we built down there at a four selector switch on the front for four channels, three channels in New York and one spare in case somebody moves somewhere else. <laughs> and we have to bring them back and tune them to <laughs> Cleveland Channel because mm -hmm. it wasn't on there to start with. Later on, we developed a machine that would tune to all the channels. But the standards in the early days were being done on 441 lines per picture, black and white transmission, and tentative standards that Philco and GE and RCA and Dumont and Hazeltine had experimentally used, and the West Coast people too, Don Lee and uh, Harry Lubke and that crowd. So the group called uh, Institute of Radio Engineers, later with Institute of Radio and Electronics Engineers, with uh, Dr. Ernst Weber was president of that group at that time, and the Radio Manufacturers Association, which was um, very active in coordinating things from the various members of the industry, mm -hmm. elected to form a group that would be a group of engineers to study the various standards that might be in use and decide what was the best for interest of the United States population, mm -hmm. broadcasters and receiver manufacturers and the general public in using these standards. Was, so was this a, a, this a organization US was standards called only? NTSC, okay. National Television Systems Committee. I've got a plaque over there about it and we'll see later. NTSC was first organized with uh, Dr. W.R.G. Baker as chairman of that group. He was the head of the operations for General Electric up in Schenectady at that time. Mm -hmm. Later on over in, um, in um, um, Syracuse, New okay. York. So Dr. Baker was appointed chairman of that group. He died later and another uh, group was formed later for color television. But the first in around 1939-1940, the NTSC was organized. About 35 top scientists from the various companies, including the Bell Telephone Laboratories, uh, Bill Winteringham, well, uh, Dr. E.F.W. Alexander from the General Electric, various people were on that group, including Elma Engstrom, who was very active for RCA. Dave Sarnoff wasn't a member of NTSC, but he assigned his top engineering people to be on the NTSC to help with this thing. Mm -hmm. I remember Elma Engstrom holding his hand out and say, now the picture there it's a small picture, get close to it to see it. Hold your hand out at arm's length like that, and the picture subtends that height. It's just, your eyes are just right to see that size of the picture. So we said, Elmer, let's have more lines in the picture, please. So Dumont and others said, let's have more lines in the picture. So the 441 lines was pushed up to 525 eventually. And uh, we had all in between gotten up as high as 819 lines for picture in experiments. We carried out a lot of experiments. The NTSC consisted of nine panels. Alfred N. Goldsmith was in chairman of one of the panels for the systems aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And I was chairman of panel eight, which had to do with synchronizing. What do you do about pulses to lock the horizontal and vertical together? What's the shape of those pulses got to be? And um, various people in charge of transmitters, receivers, and 
field studies, and so forth. So that group met many times and carried out field experiments to confirm what we're trying to do. We finally recommended those standards to the Federal Communications Commission in big hearings, and we got in trouble with the Department of Justice. It says, isn't this a cartel? It's a group of all industry getting together on one thing. He said, somebody's got to do it to get these standards so that the lock and key relationship is right. So a person turns on a television set, they can get this thing operating from any transmitter in the United States on the NTSC system. Also, Japan has the NTSC system. But we had meetings also later trying to get a worldwide, especially in color, to agree on one world standard for color television. That didn't happen. It's now the NTSC in the United States, the PAL system in certain countries, the CCAM system in Russia and France <laughs> and so forth. But that NTSC was accepted by the FCC as the standards, and they promoted a report, said, okay, those standards will apply. You may start commercial broadcasting on those standards and you can charge advertisers revenue starting July 1st, 1941. That's July 1st. the timing of the NTSC, the first one, the black and white. Well, it took a little while for people to really get running after that, and the war started, and so people shut down on that.